choose to eat has profound effects on your overall health. While certain foods may trigger chronic health conditions, others offer strong medicinal and productive qualities. Thinking about positive health effects of foods, Greek physician Hippocrates first said, Let food be your medicine and medicine be your food. So, are you interested in learning how innovations in the food industry can uh, help to improve in the health and well-being of their intended consumers, which will contribute to achieve the golden rule of let food be the medicine and medicine be the food. So, welcome to learn about innovations in food technology for improving human nutrition and well-being. I'm Dr. Gishani Somaratna, a lecturer from the Department of Food Science and Technology, Faculty of Agriculture, University of Peradeniya. Additionally, I'm also a registered nutritionist at Sri Lanka Medical Council. Before going into details of our topic, Let's clarify what is food. A food is something that provides nutrients. Well, these nutrients are substances. Uh, we can say it carbohydrate, protein, fats and vitamins as well as minerals. And these substances or chemical compounds directly provide energy for our day-to-day -day activity and also help to grow the functions of the uh, body. Then, eating a well-balanced diet rich in all these nutrients uh, could be associated with feeling of well-being or in other words, quality of our life. A healthy diet throughout the life promotes the healthy pregnancy outcome and supports the normal growth, development and healthy aging which overall helps to maintain a healthy body weight and reduce the risk of chronic diseases thereby leading to overall health and well-being. So now let's discuss what is food innovation. Well, food innovation is the development and the uh, commercialization of the new food products and it could be a process or a services too. Well, right now it's happening very rapidly, isn't it? So food and beverage companies are looking for ways to make healthy, nutritious offerings that are not only uh, easily accessible, exciting and unique, but also it should be very sustainable, right? Uh, as food industry says, stakeholders or food science undergraduate student as well as a consumer, you may have aware that during the last few decades, various food innovations have been introduced to achieve the proper nutrition from foods uh, we eat to ensure the health and well-being of our life. Now, I'm going to highlight few of these examples. Here, the triple burden of malnutrition represents the undernutrition, obesity or the overweight as well as the associated micronutrient deficiencies. As you can see here, how the gravity of this problem because it's uh, basically spread uh, throughout the most of the countries around the world and most of the micronutrient deficiencies are highly prevalent in the still prevalent in the African countries and India as well as uh, some of the uh, Southeast Asian countries. However, it is not a surprise uh, the prevalence of the micronutrient deficiencies which, is, which can be associated with both overnutrition because when it comes to the most of the junk food which are rich in unhealthy fats, source and refined carbohydrate and therefore it will not adequately provide uh, 
required amount of nutrients including the uh, this type of macronutrients uh, so to alleviate the food and nutrition related problems around the world the sustainable development goals that target food and nutrition security and sustainable agriculture were set in 2015 by the united nations general assembly and are intended to be achieved by the year 2030 so the entire food industry stakeholders are around the world work hard to achieve these goals via uh, several types of innovations. Let me take uh, or let me point out some of these food innovations that help to improve the food and nutrition security and ensure the sustainable agriculture. Here is one such example. Uh, have you heard about the golden rice? Well, golden rice is a variety of rice produced through the genetic engineering to biosynthesize beta carotene, which is a precursor of vitamin A in the edible parts of rice. It is intended to produce a fortified food to be grown and consumed in areas with a shortage of dietary vitamin A. As, as we know, vitamin A deficiency directly linked with the childhood blindness and it's a life-threatening condition which can increase the mortality and the uh, morbidity of the uh, childhood stage. So this is one of the key food innovation that uh, help us to improve the uh, nutrition and the well-being among the uh, poor children who are affected from the vitamin A deficiency. Additionally, the most effective and accessible way of securing the population with vitamins and micronutrients is to fortify, adi uh, adi uh, fortify uh, additional food and consumer products daily. So this fortification has been implemented for a long period of time in industrialized countries to achieve the successful control of vitamin A and D deficiencies as well as several vitamin B that, may, that includes thiamine, riboflavin and niacin deficiencies as well as iodine and uh, iron deficiencies. Uh, in here I would like to give you some example when it comes to the salt, uh, the fortification of the salt using iodine was introduced in the early 1920s uh, by both Switzerland and the United States. Uh, so, as a result of that introduction, uh, both Switzerland and United States, they do not currently have the problem of the iodine-related deficiencies like uh, goiter. Mm. Uh, in addition to that, uh, in the early 1940s, the fortification of the cereal products with thiamine, riboflavin and niacin has become a common practice. When we consider about the current scenario, even in Sri Lanka, the margarine products that we are using are adequately fortified with vitamin A and D. So these approaches have proven to be effective in reducing the prevalence of many diseases due to deficiencies of micronutrients such as goiter due to iodine deficiency and serophthalmia due to vitamin A deficiency and the prevalence of rickets due to vitamin D deficiency and the prevalence of anemia due to iron deficiency. In addition to that, I would like to introduce another term for you which is biofortification. The term biofortification refers to the increase of the micronutrient concentration in the edible part of the plant and that can be achieved both by using fertilizers and by stimulating the absorption of these minerals in the plant. In some countries, uh, selenium, we 
Heat biofield fortification is achieved by using selenium based fertilizers at wheat is considered a major source of selenium for our daily diet. Probably you may know selenium is considered to be an essential micronutrient for the human body uh, which can reduce the risk of degenerative diseases including cancers as well as uh, selenium has a positive effect on alleviation of the chronic kidney diseases. Now I would like to introduce some smart foods. Well, when we consider about the today's busy lifestyle, uh, even though we don't have enough uh, time to prepare our own food, as general consumers, we always like to go for healthy and convenient food item. So I'm going to give you some smart food which is good for you as well as for the planet as well as for the farmer. At the same time, these type of foods have been developed or you know, uh, innovative technologies have been applied to develop these food in order to improve the nutrition and the uh, well-being of the consumers. In here, first I would like to introduce the nutraceuticals and the functional food. So, nutraceuticals and the functional foods, they are modified types of food or the extracted nutrients uh, that claims to improve the health or well-being by providing benefits beyond that of the traditional nutrients, isn't it? And these nutraceuticals and the functional foods uh, which will directly help you to uh, provide the management and the treatment of the leading causes of death in the world which are cancer, heart disease as well as uh, respiratory diseases and the stroke, diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, kidney diseases. Then I am going to talk about the genetically modified foods which are also known as the genetically engineered food or bioengineered foods and these foods are also used to produce the smart food items and in here during this um, with the implementation of this technology that uh, could be changed the uh, DNA uh, using the methods of the uh, genetic engineering. In here genetic engineering techniques allow for the introduction of the new traits as well as greater control over traits when compared to the previous methods such as selective breeding and the mutation breeding. Well, even though genetically modified foods have a potential of improving health and well-being of humans, still there are ongoing public concerns related to food safety, regulation, labeling, environmental impact, research methods. Now I am going to talk about the culture meat. Well, cultured meat is meat produced by in vitro cell culture of animal cells instead of from slaughtered animal. So this is again an innovative technique introduced very recently and this cultured meat is produced using many of the same tissue engineering technique traditionally used in the uh, regenerative uh, medicine. Well, uh, this cultured meat is uh, very popular among the vegetarian people because uh, it says that artificial meat stops cruelty to animals is better for the environment, could be safer or more efficient and even healthier. Then in parallel to these various innovations, uh, there are uh, new techniques and new products have been developed uh, for vegetarian or the vegan people. As I mentioned to you earlier, vegetarianism is a new trend around the world. Uh, therefore, uh, different type of plants based meat products and artificial eggs as well as the dairy uh, instead of the dairy based meal uh, plant based meat products were introduced in order to keep 
meet uh, the demands of the vegetarian people. Then, do you know how smart is our food industry? Well, now people can access non-alcoholic beverages or like non-alcoholic beer. Well, as we all know, alcoholism and associated health conditions such as cirrhosis is a great problem around the world including in Sri Lanka. As a result of that, brewing industries have started to introduce non-alcoholic beer which is also kind of a regular beer but they remove the alcohol through a heating process and then had carbon dioxide added in order to provide the same feelings or the same uh, sensory attributes. However, uh, in here, uh, there are these beers uh, or the non-alcoholic uh, beers still needs improvement because the company state that uh, some common complaints are gaining about non-alcoholic brews include the loss of flavor and addition of, uh, I mean, one step in the brewing process because we have to remove the alcoholic uh, content within this beer, uh, which will increase the cost of production as well as uh, they have some problems in the uh, sugar taste and also if we remove the alcohol percentage it may shorter the shelf life of this beer so still the industry try to sort out this problem even though they innovatively produce this non-alcoholic beer then I'm going to talk about what are the innovative uh, foods uh, that have been introduced for the people who are suffering from allergic reactions. In here, uh, allergy amulets uh, is a portable food allergen sensor and this portable allergen sensor can be applied into food and uh, it is kind of a dis disposable test strip which enables the allergic person to test whether the food uh, contain any potential allergens if so then the person uh, who are suffering from allergy uh, should not eat that food likewise there are several type of strips have been developed to identify allergenic compounds within the uh, major allergenic foods as we all know most of the people are suffering from lactose intolerance and some people are suffering from the celiac disease therefore uh, most of the innovative food ideas have been introduced in order to cater the demand of uh, these people in addition to that fat free places have been developed uh, recently which are non fat substances that act like uh, food as we all know people are very conscious about their health therefore they don't like to eat uh, fats and oil very much especially saturated type of fat uh, because it's highly associated with the increments of the LDL cholesterol, bad cholesterol. Therefore, different type of plant-based uh, fat replaces have been developed. Then, very recently, uh, people have looked for immunity boosting foods due to the prevalence of the COVID-19 pandemic situation. Well, most of the immunity boosting foods contain zinc, vitamin C, iron and vitamin E. And uh, there are several innovative foods have been introduced into the food industry or the food market chain. Uh, in order to improve the immunity through these natural uh, food sources. Then I would like to share you another novel concept where scientists develop these tiny uh, mouth 
uh, tooth mounted sensors and do you know that this sensor can track what you eat so this sensor is basically used in the uh, people who are suffering from disease condition so the dietitian so the nutritionist can track what are the type of food that he or she eat uh, in order to prescribe the medicine or in order to alter their dietary pattern. Then have you heard about the term nutrigenomics? Well, nutritional genomics, also known as dental genomics, is a science of studying the relationship between human genome, human nutrition and the health. Well, each of the subcategories explains some aspect of how genes react to nutrients and express specific phenotype like disease risk. Well, based on this nutrigenomics techniques, now scientists tend to develop personalized food uh, because our gene system reacts to the food and develop disease in a unique pattern. As a result of that, due to the advancement of the technologies, uh, most of the food scientists uh, try to identify the interactions between the dietary patterns and the genetic factors and thereby try to suggest dietary changes that could prevent or reduce the disease conditions. Do you know that water is one of the key uh, component in our body and we need to drink water not only as a hydration liquid but also to maintain our body function and we cannot live without water isn't it therefore in order to track our hydration level sweat sensitive skin patch have been developed and this skin patch can be used by the athletes in order to measure their hydration level. For example, after the practicing, uh, they will lose a lot of uh, sweat, water as well as electrolytes. So using this kind of sweat sensitive skin patch, they can identify what are the required amount of water as well as electrolyte in order to replace the loss. So this type of innovative ideas have been developed in order to cater the demands of the athletes. The next one is the mobile apps. I'm not going to give you details of these apps because there are plenty of innovative mobile apps have been developed to cater the different demands of the food consumers. Uh, similar to mobile apps, uh, in here, uh, food marble uh, is a device uh, which can be used to identify the personal digestive behavior. Well, uh, this can measure the hydrogen level. Uh, hydrogen level can increase when food does not digest properly and based on the hydrogen level uh, which is released through your breath, uh, we can identify whether the food is digesting or not. Additionally, different types of robotics and automation technologies have been used in the food industry to develop innovative foods. So for example, Pizza Hut. They use robotic technologies and also human uh, and also uh, vehicles that are driven by the uh, automation technology instead of the human driven vehicle. Uh, so uh, the robots within that vehicle can cook pizza on the way to your door. Likewise, different robotic technologies have been developed and these technologies are currently used to improve the health and well-being of our uh, foods. Similar to the robotic technology, nanotechnology applications are also very much popular in the food industry. Yes. So for example, enzymes are often added to uh, food to hydrolyze anti-nutrient components and hence uh, 
increase the bioavailability of essential nutrients such as minerals and vitamins. As I explained to you earlier, recent food innovations have tried to utilize the food waste and produce byproducts that are very nutritious. Say for example, if you are removing the peel of the orange and it could be a very good source of pectin. So we are trying to extract the pectin from this type of waste material. And this uh, pectin could be act as a prebiotic. In addition to that, fiber is a very good source to alleviate the constipation like diseases. So I hope you have a clear idea about uh, what are the different type of innovative food ideas that have been introduced recently. However, always remember that not only food technology but also any other type of technology that could be a double-edged sword because as you know fire can cook our food but also it can burn us. So in here, innovative technologies can be used to produce the unhealthy foods at the same time healthy food. As I mentioned to you earlier, because of the introduction of the fast food and the junk food, now we have to face the triple burden of malnutrition. So if you are planning for a food innovation, then you have to identify your target audience as well as you have to identify your proper technology and you have to do a proper analysis of what are the positive and the negative benefits associated with this product or the technology. So that's all about my presentation and thank you so much for your listening and feel free to ask any questions. You can email me if you have any questions uh, for more clarification.